right, you guys, usually for these adventure review episodes from How to Live, I'm asking you to strap on a life jacket. They can be pretty intense, and I just want you guys to be safe. However, I recommend two more things for this episode. Number one, you're going to need one of those oxygen masks that fall from the ceilings in planes. Last in two right now, coming out of Key West. This is a 440, baby. Because we're going to be hitting some pretty high altitudes. We don't want you to hyperventilate. And number two, you're going to need a crash helmet. Because there's a pretty high probability that you're going to get thrown around in this episode. But it'll be in a pretty freaking awesome way. We've been waiting over a year for this opportunity to review one of the most highly anticipated performance boat releases on Earth. Somehow, Sarah and I were able to grab the first hull of the brand new MTI 440X. So stay tuned for a how to live adventure style review of this remarkable vessel and find out if it exceeds its expectations. And with game changing releases like the 340 and 390, that's going to be pretty hard to do. It's in your backpack. Oh, stuff in your stuff in our spank. Maybe this wasn't a great idea. And without further ado, we're going to start this adventure. You see, we do all of our reviews by telling a story. What's it actually like to be with this product and use it and have it become a part of your life? And the first page of this story reads like some sort of mystery novel on a cold winter night. Our game plan was simple. Just wake up at four in the morning, drive down to the airport and fly down to sunny Florida where our boat was waiting for us. Quick early morning drive to the airport, how hard can it possibly be? Now I know there's a lot of fantastic wives out there, but um, yeah, pretty sure Sarah ranks up there pretty high. Hey honey, thanks for moving that big branch out of the way. Can you check the tire pressure while you're out there? And let's get going and stop procrastinating. We have a plane to catch. How's the trip going so far, honey? <laughs> Only in Maine do you pass a jogger in the middle of a blizzard at 5 a.m. in the morning. And things are totally normal. I'm not going to make this stop. I'm not going to make this stop. Uh, uh, nope. Skidding. Skidding. All right then. All right, guys, I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of the snowstorm, but yeah, that's how it started. Now we made our flight barely, and it felt so good to finally sit back, relax, and dream about boats. So what is an MTI 440, and what exactly is this hype all about? Let's dig into some details. In short, the 440 is the last in line of a lineage of high-performance outboard catamarans built by MTI. These super fast, very efficient boats lead the industry and they're well known for their luxury, performance, and beauty. The main differences in these outboard cats by MTI is basically length. You have the 340, which is 34 feet long. You have the 390, which is 39 feet long. And then you have the 440, which is 44 feet long. The 440 also sports a wider cockpit and beam. And if you guys have been in the ocean long enough, you know that size does matter when you're offshore. So a larger boat will typically mean that it will handle bigger seas better. But bigger boats usually come with bigger power. So the biggest question we have in this comparison is with equal power, is the 440 as quick, as nimble, and as good of a boat as the iconic 390? And if so, how is that even possible? I mean, physically. Now, I've been fortunate enough to actually own all three model boats, the 340, the 390, and now the 440. And with 25,000 miles of driver experience combined between the 340 and 390, which interestingly enough is around the world in distance, this gives me a good background, a good foundation to do this comparison between these models and the latest MTI 440. All right, there you guys have it. The stage is set for the review, and now it's time to talk about the adventure. And 
here is what we came up with. Because the boat is waiting for us in Miami, we're gonna fly to the Keys, get our boat lift set up for the boat, rent a car, drive from the Keys to Miami, drop the car, pick up the boat, go north from Hull over to Jupiter Cut to Stewart, cut west into Lake Okeechobee, then visit Sean on the river north of Fort Myers for a complete assessment and performance tuning of this boat. Then we go south to the Keys where we can finally relax, put the boat on the lift, which should have already been adjusted. It's gonna be probably over a thousand miles on a brand new untested boat, but I have faith, I think we can pull it off. It's not truly an adventure if you know the outcome. Let's roll. Well, in the end, I decided to go south to Florida alone, giving Sarah a couple more days to work up north. Her vacation days are still very valuable. And it gave me the opportunity to get the boat lift ready for the new 440. Now, normally I wouldn't put adjusting a boat lift in one of my episodes as content. However, it ended up being a really cool DIY way to adjust your bunk on your boat lift that some of you guys might appreciate in the future. So with my boat wider and longer and my neighbors really close to the end of the lift, I needed to turn the whole lift around. So how do I unbolt it and spin it around and rebolt it without any heavy machinery and by myself? What I ended up coming up with was pretty simple. I was just gonna lower the boat lift and float the thousand pound bunk with some inflatable fenders. I'm gonna spin it while it's floating in the canal with these, well, floaty bubbies, and then just rebolt it to the lift and then raise it up. It should work, I think. Let's see. Whoa, it's floating now. Oh, look at that, it's gonna be great. Come on, baby. There we go. It is pretty mucky. Oh, nothing like those jellyfish, making sure they know that they're there. Look at that. There it is, the 180. See those floats there, one, two, three, four. I did the calculations and I knew four was gonna float it. Those two were kind of just to make sure. Now we're gonna bring it up and tomorrow you're gonna go to the hardware store get the bolts for it because I might have lost some in there. Had a couple of knuckle busters. All right, time to fast forward. Sarah flies down to Key West, I pick her up, and now it's time to pack for this epic trip to Miami to finally pick up this MTI 440. This is kind of an exciting part of the trip. It's the beginning where we're just getting organized. We've got all kinds of safety gear that has to go on this new boat. Probably gonna be like a 500 to a thousand mile trip. So. so those of you that are new to the channel, I have a little bit of a confession to make. I'm a dork. I've been an inventor my whole life. I have several patents to my name and I just love tinkering and making things better with your, well, imagination. And coming from pretty humble beginnings, it's actually how I was able to build, build my business. I make military robots. You guys might've heard of them. They're called Ripsaws. But I've always found my inventor brain doesn't just stop at the military. And what I kind of like here is look, look at this. This is, you know, this is quick, down and dirty. This is an Amazon high intensity LED flashlight. And I just modified it, you know, literally modified it for a suction cup and boom. Boom, you stick it right to the windshield. You're getting, you know, it's late at night. You're kind of getting back maybe a little bit late. You just need another hour of light. Boom. Get two of those going right there. Boom. There we go, look at that. Now you have to be careful with lights at night. It's sometimes it's in some places it can be against the law um, to have spotlights on boats. So just be careful with all that stuff. A lot of people think we just run out there and we're just running high speed, but that's not the case. These trips are, are planned long in advance and there's a lot of prep work that goes into them. And be sure to stay tuned to see how these actually look on the 440 at night. You might be surprised. And with all this gear packed for about a one week trip, it was time to grab an Uber, head to Marathon, grab a rental car, go to Miami for what will be one heck of a cool adventure review. I will say the Route 1 trip from Miami to the Keys is pretty famous for a reason. It's a 170 mile single lane highway that goes from Miami to Key West and jumps from island to island. It can be a pretty cool driving experience. My only caution is you just pay attention and drive the speed limit as it's pretty tight and there can be some pretty big boats being trailered up and down Route 1. 
Now these performance cats have some gnarly props that can be pretty expensive and hard to find, but they can be hard to travel with if you don't have your hard cases. Home Depot should have something for sure. I'm a bit surprised security didn't stop me for carrying a, well, not so concealed weapon into the store. A little bit of bubble wrap and some plastic totes, these things will be all set. You certainly don't want these king size throwing stars to be bouncing around your bilge or the back of your car. These spare props are a lot like a spare tire for a car, and it's always handy to have them inside your boat. And there are manufacturers like Strader Racing that make brackets for them, so they attach securely and safely right to the side of your hull. After what seemed like the longest ride and longest night of my life, it was finally time. No, no, it's not even overpacked. We're always in a rush. Never, never fails. We've got to go live on Facebook here in like 29 minutes. We got a haul over. We're at a hotel. We got to go get our car. And sometimes we have this channel purposely to show everybody how not to live. And you don't want to live in an eternal rush. We're always rushed. Son of a Off to haul over inlet to get the 440. Honey, reality style. <laughs> we're up to get the 440. <laughs> Big day. We're here in some hotel. <laughs> Something. And we're in a really big rush right now. We've been up since five. We didn't sleep in. Went to bed late. And we're always in a rush. So, over and out. What you're about to see is exactly how it felt. I've come to realize that the MTI 440 is now the pinnacle of performance boating evolution. It has defined and found the holy grail for every innovator and designer. And that is the perfect meld between form versus function. Soon it was time to do a familiarization run with Milton just to get to know the boat. We were able to rip through haul over with pretty flat seas, but there were some three footers rolled in there with the outgoing tide and the easterly wind. We were able to rip over them at about 90 miles an hour. And it was my first inkling that this boat was truly something special. The 44 feet bridges the gap between the waves really well, but it also just feels very secure as a boat. When you're actually airborne, you come down, it always seems to land very flat with a perfect center of gravity. Now I know you guys, it doesn't look like it because cameras never do it justice, but we just rolled over a three foot lump right there doing about 80 and we didn't even really feel it. Well, we got lifted up a little bit, but the landing was smooth, it was flat. There was no fear that we were out of balance and that we trip and stuff. We'll talk about it more in future episodes, but this boat is truly confidence inspiring. It feels really safe and planted at all speeds. It felt a lot like my 390, but just bigger and, and better in, in a bunch of different ways. Milton and I headed back to haul over so Sarah and I could leave and head up north and get this trip underway. And one of the most bizarre things happened while we were packing. This is exactly how it went down. Now, it was partially captured on drone, and I'll roll the footage, but essentially three people on a jet ski were leaving haul over while we were prepping the boat. It rolled over and one of them didn't have a life jacket. That one person yelled out, help, help, I'm drowning. Like something you'd see out of a movie.
before I knew it, I grabbed a life jacket from my drone operator and, uh, and I jumped in. It wasn't pretty, you guys. I was a lifeguard when I was a kid and every time this happened back then, it was just different every time. And this, this time, he was, he was paddling, he was dog paddling, he was staying afloat. So I never really had to engage him. I just encouraged him and put my arm up under his armpit and gave him a little bit of flotation and confidence. But then he started swimming toward the prop. And as we saw just a few minutes ago, this is something you guys don't want to touch and hit in a panic. So at that point, I was just focused at trying to pull him away from that prop and get him up on this dock. I'll never forget this one though, because I offered him the life jacket and it actually made things worse in his panic. If you go back and look at it, you'll see him kind of dog paddling on top of the life jacket and it just splashed so much more water in his face. It was not what I expected. And like I said, certainly not pretty, but it had a decent outcome in the end. So it's a fact, the first time that this 440 ladder was used in the water, it was to help bring some pretty scared people ashore. And I think that that's pretty cool. And to be honest, I debated whether or not to even use this footage, but it's a lesson for all of us. I mean, when is our last day? We'll never know. So try, try to live life the best and the fullest you possibly can. But in doing so, make sure you take those simple safety precautions, like wear a life jacket, especially if you don't know how to swim. All right, everybody, to bring that story full circle and switch gears, I must tell you the truth. I did end up in the ER with one hell of a rash after that splashdown in the Miami River. Pregnizone, antibiotics, and gasoline seemed to work just fine. Man, oh man, I get so distracted. Where were we? Oh yeah, picking up the 440 for the first time and about to start our adventure review, a trip north and then west through Lake Okeechobee and then south to the Keys called the South Florida Loop of Kickassness. All right, so here we are. We found our nice little secluded beach. We're gonna be doing some runs out here. Oh, honey, watch your step. Gotta watch out for these things. Man of War jellyfish here, they're all over the beach. Well, I know you guys are gonna kill me again, but guess what, look at the time. It's almost 20 minutes in and you guys, lunchtime is over. It's time to go back to work or hey, it's just how it works, man. People just watch for about 20 minutes these days. We will come back to you with another episode as soon as we put it together. We're working hard up here to make sure that happens. But we truly do have one of the craziest adventures for you guys coming up. We stopped to see Sean Trente at his River X secret location to test the boat and to tune the boat and to make it go even faster. How do we do that? Stay tuned to find out. Pretty convenient here, huh? Also, we find one of the coolest little hidden sandbars. It's surrounded by coral reefs, and only the locals know how to get into it. We also find out why Sarah is chest deep in water, carrying her backpack and holding a pocketbook high. We're like two and a half feet of water. We're, gonna, we're just gonna roll in real slow. And don't forget, if you see one of these stickers in your own life's adventures. Take a selfie with it, post it on social media, send us the share, and we will send you some really cool how to live swag. And finally, we give you guys the full assessment, the full review of the 440 boat. How good is it? What does it mean? How fast does it go? What's its acceleration like? What's its big C capability like? You'll see very interesting camera angles you've probably never seen before, yet they perfectly illustrate why a performance cat works so well. How to lose a camera in three, two, one. We've got about a terabyte of content on this review. 
So stay tuned for what will be the most in-depth, informative, and entertaining boat review we've ever done. We hope to see you guys out there on the water. And until then, boat safe, boat happy. Over and out. Rolling coal, baby. This is it.